Seriously? Really? I can't believe they wrote that in there. That's just ridiculous. So today I'll be trying out a new concealer from the drugstore. This is the Burt's Bees Concealer. So I bought the shade Fair, which is the lightest shade available. So for whatever reason, they only released this in three colors. They released it in Fair, Light Medium, and Medium Dark. And that makes me wonder why they even bothered putting out a concealer. I mean, the Burt's Bees Goodness Glows Foundation has 18 shades available. So you would think that they would put a little bit more effort. They didn't necessarily need 18 shades of concealer, but 10 shades of concealer would have been nice. I, I just, I don't know, I'm a little confused as to what they were thinking because if someone was buying the foundation, they may want to buy the matching concealer to go with it. It just seems a little silly that they would only release this in three shades. And if you're new here, I'll link my playlist for all the other concealers I tried in the description box below, or you can click the card right up there. So let's check out some of the claims on Burt's Bees website, and they have a freaking paragraph. It says, Burt's Bees conceals dark circles, blemishes, and minor perfections all day. This 98.5% natural concealer contains a conditioning multi-benefit formula with lightweight pigments that conceals dark circles, blemishes, and imperfections while moisturizing skin for an all-day natural looking finish. With the ultra hydrating ingredients, avocado oil and shea butter, Burt's Bees Concealer nourishes and keeps your delicate skin balanced and beautiful. This concealer instantly brightens the eye area and hides trouble spots such as under eye circles and blemishes that just foundation only will not cover. Available in three different shades to best match your skin tone. Seriously? Really? I can't believe they wrote that in there. That's just ridiculous. Burt's Bees Concealer delivers a natural look without heavy finish that doesn't cake or settle into fine lines and wrinkles. So if you're enjoying this video while you're watching it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you want to know more about the Burt's Bees Concealer and how it wears throughout the day, don't go anywhere, just keep watching. So I'm also filming a review today for the Revlon Photo Ready Candid Foundation, which is why I look like this. Uh, most likely I'll be posting this one first. If you'd like to watch this review, you could click right up there. So looking at the ingredients for this concealer, there's nothing ridiculously funky. There's a derivative of coconut oil, um, caprylic triglyceride, shea butter. So looking at the ingredients for this one, I expect it to be more of a hydrating concealer. Alrighty, what does this say on the packaging? Uh, conceals dark circles and blemishes and minor imperfection. Instantly brightens the eye area and moisturizes with avocado oil. I like that. So I still have this in the packaging. I probably should get it out. So this is the packaging. It has this cute little honeycomb print that seems to be standard for all of Burt's Bees packaging. And it comes with uh, a doe foot applicator. The instructions for this are kind of funny. Use the applicator to dot or swipe concealer directly onto skin to cover imperfections. Blend by patting gently with your fingertip or use your favorite application tool to concentrate coverage precisely where needed. So basically you can do what you want. There's no right or wrong way to use this concealer. So I've already moisturized my under eyes with a little bit of the Ordinary's Rosehip Seed Oil because my inner corners where I need the most coverage are also prone to under eye dryness, especially this time of year when there's not a lot of humidity in the air. So I think I'll start with this eye first because that is where I need the most coverage, right where that big splotch of purple is. So there's the side with concealer and there's a side without. As far as canceling out the purple, I can still see like a big blotch poking through. It doesn't seem to be the greatest as far as coverage is concerned. Um, I don't need the concealer to be thick and heavy and cakey, but what I do need is more color correcting. I just don't know if this is cutting it for me. Right, let's see how it looks on the other eye. I've been playing with this for the last 10 minutes, trying to uh, get this looking the way I want it to. I think this is pretty much as good as it's gonna get. I mean, it doesn't look horrible. It's just the coverage isn't great. I could go back and just reapply with a brush, but I'm afraid if I do that, I'll end up with a dryness and a caking issue. So I think it's best just to leave it as is. But right now, this is not one of my favorites. There's just something about it that's bugging me. Like it seems to be blending up here, but as soon as it hits the area where my foundation is, it's doing this weird pilling thing. So I'm just, I'm trying to smooth that out a bit because the last thing I need is like foundation pilling all over my skin. 
I'm not gonna bother setting my under eyes because it is the winter. And um, usually the only time of year I can get away with using powder on my face is when we have more humidity in the air. I don't know, what's irritating me is it just doesn't seem to be doing anything. I don't really see it canceling out dark circles very well. This one is more of a problem than this one and I can still see it poking through, tormenting me. It's definitely not a full coverage concealer. If you have any dark circle issues, this is probably not the one to go for. But I do have dry under eye issues and this one doesn't seem to be accentuating that problem. Like getting up close, I didn't see any inner corner dryness or clinging or dry patches happening. So I'm gonna go do the rest of my makeup and I will check in with you in five hours and let you know how this has been holding out. Calling the time at 4.32. So this concealer has been on for about six hours, five and a half, six hours now. I'm not having any dry patch issues. Like it's not the level of coverage I would like. I don't like something thick and heavy and cakey, but whatever I choose to use has to cancel out dark circles. So I will zoom you in and you can take a peek at my under eyes. See, it's not the best for coverage. It's starting to wear away up there. So even though the coverage isn't that great, the reason I'm hesitant to write this one off 100% is because it's not drying out my under eyes. And that is a big deal for me because concealers, for whatever reason, find dryness and they cling to it like crazy. So right now it's not the best, but not the worst. I'm still on the fence, but I will see you later tonight and let you know how it's holding up. So the time is 9.57. I've had this concealer on for a little over 12 hours now. And uh, I'll be honest, I, I don't really see anything left. Yeah, my dark circles look pretty much fully exposed. That's not a good look. So I'll just zoom you in and give you a quick look. All right, there, it's just, it's all worn away. Same thing over here. It's pretty much even on both sides. At least the teeny tiny amount of product that's there hasn't found a dry patch to cling to or isn't caking in the corners. This one was kind of a disappointment from the beginning. Starting with the shade range, it's just ridiculously super limited. Three shades for a new concealer launch just seems silly, especially when Burt's Bees has a foundation that has 18 shades. You would think they'd make a little bit more of an effort. It also didn't do a very good job at covering dark circles in the first place. And on top of things, it wasn't very long lasting. So if you have any questions about this concealer, just leave them in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe before you leave. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.